Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to For Britain's second national conference. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for making this incredible, incredible thing happen. And it's not an incredible thing just for me, although it is an incredible thing for me. It's an incredible thing for this country. And it truly, truly is, because there is nobody, and I mean nobody, who is going to say what we will say and do what we will do. Absolutely nobody. And people are starting to realize that very, very rapidly. People are coming to us. We have people here today from other parties. We have people here today inviting me to their branch meetings. We have people coming from all walks of life. I've just been told about a member, a former member of the Greens who has now joined us, who is not the only former member of the Greens that we have. So thank you. I want to thank all of you here. Uh, you have made this, I, I don't even know what to call it. Is it a dream? Or maybe we're the reality and everything else is the dream. Or nightmare. <laughs> Quite right. We have heard from people today and someone came up to me and said, it was David actually, David where are you? Said, this party has the most wonderful people. And we do. Let's just look at who we've heard from today. From Damien Ryan. Someone who, I'll be representing Damien in his tribunal case, which is uh, quite nice actually, get to flex a bit of legal muscle again, it's been a long time. And I read through the case file and the allegations that he faces. Now he mentioned one of them to you, that he is anti-Jeremy Corbyn. It is written, it is written in this file that he is anti-Labour and anti-Jeremy Corbyn. And therefore we have to keep an eye on this guy. We have to go and speak to his children. They write down that one of, the, one of his daughters was upset when the police arrived, and they write this in the report. And you know what the implication is. His poor children. What they have to put up with having a monster for a father like this. And what he did was complain about the Muslim rape gangs abusing children all over Rotherham, and then they deemed him a threat to children. Rotherham Council deemed Damien Ryan a threat to children. That is the upside down world we are living in. We all know who the real threat to children is, and it's Rotherham Council, not Damien Ryan. We have heard from Barbara Wood, who's told us about this absolute insanity of the trans madness. And that's what I'll always call it, the trans madness, because this is madness. You can get a police officer at your door because you won't agree that someone with a beard down to his, down to his chest is a woman. This is where we are. If you dare to suggest that you have to have been a girl at some point in order to be a woman, you are risking arrest in our country risking arrest for pointing out obvious truths. We are the only party who will deal with this issue and deal with it, we will. You have your manifesto today, read it. I can tell you with absolute certainty, it is the best political manifesto in this country today. With absolute certainty, I'll tell you that. I just, while I'm on the trans issue, let me go through a little bit of the manifesto on that. And as Barbara said in her speech, we're not here to pick on transsexuals. It's not what this is about. We are here to stop the madness associated with it. Myself and Barbara attended an event in London recently, and the things we heard would blow your mind. Three and four year old children are being told that there are dozens of genders and that they need to pick one. They have introduced this language into schools. 
They are producing books telling children about all these dozens of genders. And then they turn it around. They say to the kids, you have to pick a gender. And then they pretend that the children are driving this. It's the children who want all these genders. It's an absolute travesty. It is child abuse. These are children who may be suffering with low self-esteem, identity issues, some things, these things that young people have. And in comes this toxic, toxic agenda, funded, by the way, by the government, and that is the Tory government. Nothing has changed under the Tories. It has gotten worse and worse and worse. This is your money being paid to abuse children in school. We will stop it. We will stop funding transgender groups and keep them out of schools. This is insane. We will make absolutely sure that if you want to say that a man can't become a woman, you will not lose your job. You will not be arrested. You will not be threatened with arrest. You may speak your mind in Great Britain. And we will bring that back. We will restore freedom of speech to this country. And only we will do it. Furthermore, last point on this issue. Women's sport is being absolutely destroyed. And we are watching this with this, this complete, utter madness. Let me give you an example. A man named Rachel <laughs> won the World Women's Cycling Contest recently. And you can see this madness happening. You can see the podiums. You've got your gold, silver and bronze and there's a, there's a woman on the silver and a woman on the bronze and in the middle on the gold is some big six foot plus bloke <laughs> and we're all looking at this and everyone knows it's madness everyone knows and yet we just stand there going yeah okay I better clap <laughs> I better clap because if I don't clap I'll be a fascist and a bigot and a hate monger we all know this is insane and we are being compelled once again, as Barbara said, we are being forced by threat of losing our livelihood or even arrest to say what we don't think, to pretend to believe what we don't believe. That is not Great Britain and we will not put up with it. We will stop any male to female transsexual entering women's sporting contests. Absolutely no way will this continue. It's a travesty. And it's such an injustice to the women who spent years giving their life, training for a sporting event, a sporting career, only to have it swept away from them. This will stop. This will stop. And it's not just talk, we will actually do it. Another major issue is climate change. Where did this come from? It's like the trans thing, overnight. Absolutely overnight. Suddenly, there it is, everywhere. I see in New York, there's a painting, a mural, of this little Swedish girl. Well, actually, she's not a little girl, is she? She's made to look like a little girl. They are pushing children to the front of these climate protests because they are exploiting children. What is happening is that people are going into schools and teachers are very much responsible for a lot of this. They are going into schools and teaching very young children that the world is going to end in 10 years time. These kids are terrified of this. Of course they are. Who wouldn't be if it were true? But don't you remember? Years ago it was going to end in 10 years time as well. <laughs> We've been telling kids this for a long time. But now, just in the last year, it's everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. It has to stop. People who know that the science behind this is a crock are being banned from universities. The, they're called names by the press. Climate change deniers. As if we're the crazy ones. The upside down world means that when you say that we're not all going to die in 10 years time, you're the crank. So the ones who say we're all going to be dead in 10 years, they're the sane ones. And the ones who say, hold on, let's have a bit of reason here. We're the cranks. That's how upside down this is. It will stop. 
It will stop. We have got to stop the lies propagated via the public sector, and particularly via schooling. In our manifesto, you will see today that we will introduce a new national curriculum, and it will be followed. And if any teacher doesn't like it, there's the door. You will teach this national curriculum or you will lose your job. And in it, we will tell children the truth. We will stop the lying internationalist agenda. You might be familiar with the National Union of Teachers saying they wouldn't teach British values. They were instead going to teach international values. There's no such thing as international values. We don't all have the same values. We have different values. This country has values. And those values are the ones that will be taught to British children. We will teach them about free speech, about freedom of conscience, freedom of assembly, freedom of association. And we will tell them how lucky they are to live in this once free and will be again free country. We will teach the truth. We will teach the truth about history. We will teach about communism. And we will teach that we are currently under threat of communism. Because that, ladies and gentlemen, is what this is. The communists are on the march. They are in the schools. They want to destroy our liberties and reduce us to a totalitarian state. Like the morally repugnant thieves that they are, they are doing it via children. We will stop them. We will identify these people and we will stop them. And we will make sure that everyone understands what communism is, what it does, and who is propagating it today. And who's propagating it today, overwhelmingly, is Corbyn's Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn is a communist. He must be stopped. He is doing what all communists do, promising free stuff. It's all going to be wonderful. We'll give you everything for free. I saw a fantastic tweet. I know I'm not on Twitter anymore. I'm not allowed on Twitter anymore, but I still see the odd tweet. I saw a brilliant one yesterday. Uh, a woman tweeted, it's almost as if Labour went into a school and said, what do young kids like these days? And one said, 15 pound an hour at McDonald's. And another said, free Wi-Fi. And then the manifesto was born. <laughs> That's Labour's manifesto. It's There's also a great one of Jeremy Corbyn with a kitten in each hand saying free, free kittens for everyone. It's the kittens I feel sorry for. I'm worried about the kittens, to be honest with you, especially the ones in Jeremy Corbyn's hands. But he has to be stopped. And luckily, I don't see Labour coming back from this. I really don't. Corbyn is hopefully unelectable. I don't think he's going to win. However, we can't be complacent about that. I do see a little bit of complacency about Corbyn. We have to make sure he doesn't win, but I don't think he will. But regardless of that, look at the percentage that he won the leadership by. He really trounced that leadership election. He won it with a significant amount of the vote. And since he became leader, momentum have taken over the Labour Party. They are pushing out moderate MPs, they are certainly pushing out Jewish MPs. And it's too late to go back. No, momentum will not allow a moderate, sane leader of the Labour Party again. They won't allow it. They're gone. It's over for Labour. It is now a hard left communist party. And that isn't going to change. So this presents us with our greatest opportunity. We will go after Labour with everything we've got. This country deserves someone to go after Labour with everything they've got. We will do it. We will do it. Look at the last year. We have done so much as a party. It's easy to forget. It's easy to see the obstacles we face, and those obstacles are many. We have a media, a toxic, poisonous, media. 
And on that, when you read your manifesto, you will see that we are the only party proposing ways to deal with the disgusting, reality-bending media that we are subjected to to this day. We will make it so that you cannot call a political candidate a fascist without justifying that label. We will make it so that if they do call you a name, you have a right of reply. Everyone who stands for election and is smeared in a newspaper must have a legal right to reply. And in the same newspaper, I'll give you an example. The Telegraph called me a neo-fascist. In a headline, just a couple of days before the UKIP leadership election contest opened. Now, if there was any justice, and for Britain will bring this justice, I should have been given a page in the Telegraph, the same length as the one that called me a neo-fascist, to respond and say why I am not a neo-fascist. This cannot continue. The media is the filter between the candidate and the voter. And they are twisting and distorting our message and lying to the public. The public is not voting on what we actually say. It's voting on the lies the media tells them that we say. That will end. We need the truth from the media. And they won't do it on their own. Because the media is swimming in left-wing activists disguised as journalists. That has to end. It has to end. We will bring that to an end. But Labour is our big chance. The demise of Labour is our big chance. And history is going in our direction. And despite the obstacles, despite the toxic media, despite the politicians, the career gravy train politicians constantly attacking anyone who has a chance to break through. And that's why they attack us, because we do have a chance to break through. When they attack you, when hope not hate calls you a fascist, I was just speaking to Frankie about it, when they attack you, take it for what it is. It's the greatest compliment you could get. Because if we weren't relevant, they wouldn't bother. They are going after us because they know that millions of people all over this country will agree with every word we are saying. So they must either deplatform us or lie about our message. We can't and won't let them defeat us. Take strength from their attacks. That's what I do. That's what we must all learn to do, is take strength from their attacks. Because history, as I say, is going in our direction. The only thing stopping us from becoming a major, major political party is ourselves. Our own faith, our own belief in whether or not we can do this. That's the only thing that stands in the way of whether or not we succeed. When I was a kid, I always believed this. I was a, a, a stubborn, stubborn kid. And I came for, I, I know. That's hard to believe, isn't it? I don't come from money. I don't come from power. I come from a working class background. I come from a background where we learned as children to accept our lot and be grateful. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is wrong with it, it's not written in general, but what is wrong with it is that when you accept your lot, you accept a status of powerlessness. You accept that the powerful are over there and the powerless are over here. I read a, an interview about David Cameron a few days ago. And someone in it said, this is a man who believes he was born to rule. He comes from a class that believes it is born to rule. And that class does exist. They believe that this is their, their place in life, the ruling class. And the reverse side of that, the flip side of that, is that people who are not born into wealth and power believe too that that's their place in life, that they have to sit and wait for other people to make the rules. They don't. We don't. The only thing stopping us is our own belief. And if we believe we can't have power, 
If we believe we can't have a say, then that's what will happen. But if we believe that we can have a say, that too is what will happen. It's about faith. And I'm not going to stand up here and preach. This is not a, a religious thing. It's about faith and belief and the power of faith and belief. You will hear it in great philosophies. All the great religions teach similar things. Belief makes things happen, and it does. And I do believe in it. And when I was a kid, I never accepted that this was my place in life. I believed then, and I believe now, that anything is achievable, and it is. All we have to do is stand our ground, keep telling the truth, and we can make it. We can do it. And look at us today. Look at this. This is extraordinary. I cannot believe I am here. I can't believe we are here. And you should all be so very, very proud of yourselves. And I mean that. It is so difficult to stand up against, to swim against the tide, to stand up against this battering, this constant, constant battering. But stand up against it, we do. The reason I'm still standing here and the reason that people are now beginning to come to us in numbers that we haven't seen, we've getting interest from all across the country, various different political backgrounds, is because we are consistent and strong. And that consistency and strength will take us to where we need to be. I have never backed down or changed my tune, and I have taken a battering from all sides because of it. I've taken it from the left, obviously. I've taken it from the mainstream. And I've taken it from the right. I've had people like Nigel Farage call me racist and Nazi. I've been told time and time and time again to tone it down. You'll never have a political career if you don't tone it down. You'll never get there unless you start to say the things the media expects you to say. I will never say the things the media wants me or expects me to say. Never, ever. In our first full year, which is what we've just had, we have gone from, we've had our, our first elections, our first elected councillors, we won in Epping Forest and we won in Hartlepool. We beat the Tories in Toryland and we beat Labour in Labourland. We stood about 50 people. We won two. We came second and third across the country. Now, pro rata that out. Just imagine what we would do if we had hundreds or thousands of candidates. And this is in our first year when we are still trying because I tell you, there's no guidebook to this. No one gives you a handbook how to run a political party. We just, we, we're keeping our head above water, scrambling trying to get this thing together, trying to get a party structure together, trying to get a constitution together. And then you have all these requirements of the Electoral Commission, which we also had to battle with. And I see people talking on, on YouTube videos and what have you, about we'll just set up a new political party. That's what we'll do. We'll start a new party. And I shake my head and think they've got no idea. No idea of the bureaucracy and the formality and the accounts you have to keep and the submissions you have to make. It's a nightmare. But we got through it. And while we were getting through that first year, we elected two out of 50 councillors. I think that deserves a round of applause, actually. <laughs> I'm extremely proud of that. But here's something else we achieved which you may not know about. We achieved major party status at the Electoral Commission in our very first year. Now, major party status is achieved via finances. We raised more the ceiling to be a major party in the Electoral Commission is £250,000. We raised more than that ceiling in our first year. We raised more than 250000 And unique 
among small parties. We were elevated into major party status, and we did it in our very first year. I was speaking to uh, one of our committee members recently on a podcast who has got years of experience in politics. And he told me quite rightly that what we have achieved is unique. Parties are born and then they have their first year or so in this really vulnerable stage where they could easily fall. And it, you go through transitional stages. People come and go. Uh, there are always, always difficulties. But we have now come through that initial stage, which is, as he said, quite rightly, is pretty much unique. But we've done it. And we've done it for a variety of reasons. But the main reason is our message. Our message is true. It relates. That silent, that silent parent out there whose child is coming home from school with all sorts of rubbish, and that parent is thinking, there's something wrong here. I don't like this. this. I don't want my children taught this. But they can't say anything because they're afraid. They're afraid. They're afraid they'll lose their job. They're afraid of the police knocking on the door. They're afraid that their children will be punished for it. That parent is our demographic. That silent person who is terrified of the way this country is going is agreeing with us, and no one is so far representing them. That's us. That's who we will be. There are millions of people in this country waiting, waiting for this party. And they know, they know how dishonest, they know what a mucky game politics can be. So they've learned not to trust politicians. And Brexit has confirmed to them that you cannot trust politicians. And this is going to be our biggest selling point. This is what will make people trust us. Because when you have the courage to speak out despite all the threats, that is what will make people trust you. And people will trust us. Because we are taking all of the battering and we are still standing and we will carry on standing. I have so much faith, so much confidence in this party. I don't know what's going to happen in politics over the next few months. I suspect we'll see a Tory government after the 12th of December. I never thought I'd say this, but I hope we see a Tory government after the 12th of December. <laughs> and I only hope that because the only other option is Labour. And we can't have it. And even more frightening than Jeremy Corbyn in Downing Street is Diane Abbott in the Home Office. That's even worse. It's even worse. <coughs> Diane Abbott hates this country, let's be clear. Hates it. And people know she hates it. And if she were installed in the Home Office, she would open the borders on day one. And she would fill the country with people who hate, the, who hate it every bit as much as she does. Because they want a majority of anti-British people. Therefore, they will not have to pretend they give a damn about the ordinary British people come election time. Labour are a disaster. But I suspect we will get a Tory government after December 12th. The Tories will go on to do what Labour does, but just a little bit differently. Not even more slowly. You know, people say the Tories are Labour just a few feet behind. The Tories are Labour, but with a different front face. That's all. Let's not forget for a second that the mass immigration that is transforming this country beyond recognition, against the wishes of its people, continues under the Tories. Let's not forget that the trans madness continued under the Tories. Let's not forget that our freedom of speech has continued to be eroded under the Tories. So whilst they're mildly, mildly better than Labour, they are Labour with a different face. And people will learn that. They will understand that. 
The Liberal Democrats, what is there to say about the Liberal Democrats? It hasn't already been said. They're a bit of a, a, a living meme, aren't they? The Brexit party, bit of a catastrophe for them. It is a bit of a catastrophe for them. Uh, it hasn't gone well for the Brexit party. There's been a, as someone said earlier, the balloon has very much popped, and it has. And there's a reason it hasn't gone well. Because the substance isn't there. If you really want to change politics for good, you don't do it with a single issue, flash, uh, f flashy, flashy campaign, straight to the top. That doesn't work. That's not how you change politics for good. How you change politics for good is down on the ground with the people. That's the only way you're going to change it. So we are going to focus on getting people into council seats. Our two current councillors, one of whom you'll hear from in a couple of minutes, our two current councillors are doing us so proud. They are excellent, absolutely excellent. Now, I want you, as members of this party, to go away from here today and think about where you're going to stand in the May local elections. Think about it, pick your seat, get working. Get out there, do what Julian and Karen did, knock on doors, make yourself noticed, and you will, we will, return more councillors come May. They will be excellent councillors, and they will show people the people who matter, the tax-paying public, they will show them who we are, that we are here to bring common sense, that we are here to bring the truth, that we are here genuinely to stand up for them, not for whatever fad happens to be fashionable today, but for them, for the decent, law-abiding British people who the other parties have completely, completely abandoned and forgotten about. That's who we are here to stand for. And we will. And we will have more councillors. And then we will have more councillors. And then we will have more councillors. And then our time will come, and it will, that we will enter Parliament. And we will change this country. We truly will. I will... I have every intention of going into Parliament. Every intention. And nothing is going to stop me. And when I do go into Parliament, I will stand in the House of Commons and I will tell them what a shower of treacherous, lying, betraying, anti-British careerists they are. And I will tell the British public over and over again. I will challenge them at every opportunity. I will embarrass them at every opportunity. And the British public will see it, and then we will have more members of Parliament. It will happen. It will happen. I want to leave you with a very, very simple message. First of all, thank you. And I mean that so sincerely. I have a massive, I, 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 I don't want to say these words, but I'm going to have to. I have a dream. <laughs> I do. I do. I have a dream of changing and turning the truth, bringing the truth, turning around the lies, bringing the truth, standing up for this great country that I love. And I know that that dream can come true. There's absolutely no reason why it can't. All we have to do is organize ourselves, stay committed, stay strong, take the beatings, laugh at them. Laugh at hope, not hate, because they're ridiculous. Laugh at them. Keep going. Keep going. And we will get there. We really, really will. Believe in it work for it, and absolutely nothing can stop us. Thank you very much for everything you have given to me personally. Thank you for everything you've done for this country, and will do for this country. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Kat, future government minister. <laughs> 
Loved your joke about Diane Abbott, by the way. <laughs> Not at all. Future government minister, Kat. Thank you to the amazing committee. I don't think you want to be a government minister, Ed, otherwise I'd have said the same. Yeah. I, we have the most incredible committee. And every time, you know, people tell me all the time, including several times today, what a wonderful team I have around me. And I'm blessed to have that team. I absolutely know how lucky I am. How lucky I am to have this incredible job. I love this job. I love what you have given me. I, it, it inspires me every single day. Every day I feel, I get up and I feel like I'm making history. And I am. We are making history. There's a great quote by Margaret Mead, an American author, who said that to change history takes only a small group of committed people. And she's right. That is what it takes. People who are willing to stand up and stand for the truth. It's all about the truth. That's what it comes down to. You cannot go wrong when you are telling the truth. And the greatest asset this party has is we are telling the truth. And there is nothing anyone can do to take that away from us. Be proud to be a party of the truth. I'm actually getting a little bit emotional now. I really am. This, this, means, this means the world to me. It really does. And I know that we're going to succeed. And every time, I, when, I, when I think about this great country, when I see this great flag, I feel a real emotion. I feel it. it it's, not, it's not an intellectual thing. And faith itself is not an intellectual thing. You often see people on, I, I'm going to make an admission now. I watch The Apprentice. I do. I like The Apprentice. I think it's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. But you see that, that people trying to take that message, trying to enact that message, that belief can move mountains. And they'll say to themselves, I'm going to win this, I'm going to win this. That's not how it works. It's not about a thought. It's about your soul. It's about who you are inside, who you really are, and what you really believe, and what you're willing to die for. And I am willing to die for this. I am willing to die for this country. I am willing to give everything I've got to save this country. Everything I've got. <laughs> and the reason is, it deserves it. This great country is absolutely unparalleled in history. Unparalleled. It is the greatest country in the world. I know everyone says that about their country, but in our case, we're right. <laughs> it's the greatest country in the world. It is a stunningly beautiful country. Its culture has been copied so much around the world that people don't even realize that it's British culture. Things like trial by jury, parliamentary democracy, these are British. And they're copied and practiced all over the world to such an extent that the world has forgotten where it came from. It came from here. It came from Britain. This country has fought off totalitarianism and fascism and Nazism, and we will do it again. We will do it again, and we will do it with our party. I believe in it. I believe in our message. I believe in our manifesto. I believe in you, and I believe in myself. We can do this. Thank you very much for everything you have given me. Thank you.